welcome to the Jada and Stitches show and welcome to an introduction to doily making. We have made some doily style projects on the channel before so if you're thinking to yourself I'm pretty sure Jada's done a doily. We have, we've got some doily-esque projects. In fact we will link to our playlist in the description box down below of all the thread style content that we've done here on the channel so far. But we haven't actually talked about what makes a doily and maybe why some people like myself have tended to steer away from the fine crochet thread style of work for most of their crochet career. Doilies typically are made using crochet thread. So a doily is a small version or a large version of a motif, a fancy one. Typically you think of a doily as something maybe in your grandmother's house sitting underneath a potted plant um, or a very beloved photograph, something like that. They are meant to cover spots <laughs> on the backs of chairs or maybe on damaged furniture and they were also designed to showcase the craft of lace making or crochet, something that like old ladies or even middle-aged ladies like myself could sit around working on. They were a great way to practice your big stitches and I don't mean double crochets necessarily, I mean treble crochets, double treble crochets, triple treble crochets, multiple crochet stitches together. When you're working small, like with crochet thread and a tiny little hook, those big stitches aren't quite as cumbersome to handle as they are when you're maybe using them in a regular yarn project. But we'll tell you a little bit more about that in today's tutorial. And we do have a tutorial for you today. We're actually going to be making a tiny version, this in fact, this very pretty flower motif. This is the tiny version of the big flower motif we made here a while ago in a live tutorial. It's this thing. This is our pretty spring flower modern doily. That is made using a size 4 medium weight cotton yarn and a 5.5 millimeter hook, also known as an I or 9. And this is exactly the same project, only made using crochet thread, not even the super fine stuff, and a smaller hook. Let's talk hooks. Most of the time when we crochet, <laughs> we typically use a medium sized yarn, like a size 4 weight, a size 3 DK weight, something like that, and a hook that you can physically see. Like you can see the actual hook in it. Well, <laughs> some hooks are so small, like this one, they may even come with a protective covering because we're getting into needle territory here. Some hooks are so tiny you almost can't even see them. I can just barely see that that's a crochet hook and this is one of the larger steel hooks made for using crochet thread. Now we're not using anything this small today. We are going to use a two millimeter hook 2.25 millimeter hook, even two and a half millimeter hook, it's whatever you feel you're comfortable with. That's also the B range, so the B range hooks. They're small but you can still see them and we're going to be using a three or a five weight crochet thread today. The reason for that is because you can still kind of feel it, you're not sort of jumping right into working with thread that actually feels like sewing thread and I think that is the thing that has scared people like myself away from doing doily construction, or even just working with the tiny hooks and the crochet thread. You probably see some of those tablecloths and you think, holy cow, that must have taken forever. I think I might go blind doing it. <laughs> so, if you're new to doily making, it's a good idea to just jump in, but jump in with a small motif. Now this is about four inches across. It makes a lovely little coaster. So if you wanted to work up a few of these, then you'd have a lovely, and I mean lovely, set of coasters for anybody. This would actually make a nice wedding gift, a bunch of these little coasters. Um, there are only five rows to this, like there's five rounds. So if you put it in your head that I only have to do five rounds, there's row one, row two, row three, row four, row five, I'm done. That's a nice way to conceptualize working small. Um, you can use whatever crochet thread you have and the smallest hook you're comfortable with to start. We're going to be working with some big stitches. There are treble crochets in here and there's a treble crochet six stitches together part in the fifth row. But as frightening as that sounds, because you're working small with a small hook, it's actually not as difficult as it is when you're doing it with the regular sized yarn and a regular sized hook, like for crocheting blankets and whatnot. I found that working this with the bigger hook and the bigger yarn was actually trickier than working with the small hook 
and the small thread in this case. Anyway, that's all I'm going to say. That's your little introduction to doilies and motifs. And uh, it's fun to experiment. So if you have small hooks and you have small thread at home, um, definitely give today's tutorial a try. I mean, it's very pretty. But also consider things that you like, like familiar patterns that you're very comfortable with, like a granny square, or maybe your favorite baby blanket uh, repeating stitch pattern. Just try it with a tiny hook and some crochet thread and see how it turns out. It looks the same but different. And if you're already familiar with a pattern, it's a great way to get used to using a small hook and crochet thread, and who knows, you might get addicted to do it like I did. Okay, let's grab our small hooks, we'll grab our crochet thread, we'll head on over to the craft table, and we will stitch up an introduction to doily making together. For our doily, I'll be using 20 yards of a size 3 crochet thread. This is 100% cotton. It's a size 3 or a size 5. It's also known as the fashion weight. It is not as tiny as a size 10 or a size 30 or a size 80. It's a little easier to see and that's why I recommend it for introduction to doily making. I'm going to be using a 2.25 millimeter hook. This is also known as a B, but you can use any hook size that you feel is comfortable. For reference, this is the exact same pattern made with a size 4 medium weight cotton yarn and a 5.5 millimeter hook, also known as an I or a 9. So if you wanted to make the larger version of this, which is 8 inches across from one point to one point, bigger than my hand, um, that's how big it will end up with that hook and a medium weight sized yarn. This one was made using a size 3 yarn and the same hook and it is four and a half inches across. It is just a little bit bigger than the palm of my hand. Exact same pattern but that's how much it sizes down. It's almost in half. You're going to want a pair of scissors, a yarn needle uh, with a big enough eye to fit whatever yarn you're using, and some stitch markers. You might find these useful. In this case, if you're working really small, safety pins make a good little stitch marker because you can clip them on, they hang, and they get out of your way. Uh, but 20 yards approximately for the small version. If you're going to make the big version, I would read, get about 40 yards of a size 4 medium weight yarn if you're making the larger version because you are going to need a little bit more. But once you've got your chosen yarn and your chosen hook, we can get started. We're going to take our thread and we're going to begin with a cinch circle. If cinch circles or magic circle, sliding ring, slip ring, whatever you want to call them, if these give you trouble, then you can make a slip knot, chain four, join with a slip stitch to the first chain to make a tight ring. Ultimately what we want is something that's so tiny you almost can't see the center of it. This will help with tension, it'll help keep your doily flat, and you won't have a hole in the middle of your doily. Once you've chained one to secure your cinch circle, or if you've made a chained ring, chain one, we're all going to work eight single crochet into the circle. And if you've made the cinch circle like me, make sure you're working over top of your short tail, because that's what we're going to use to cinch the circle shut. Once you've single crocheted eight stitches into your ring, grab your short tail, hold your stitches, pull it nice and tight, and that will cinch everything up. Then you're looking for that first single crochet you made. Sometimes it helps to count backwards if you have to, just to make sure that you've got all eight in there. If you only chained a ring to work into, you're still looking for that first single crochet you made. It will probably be on the tight side. So take a second. Find the full top of it, there we go, and join with a slip stitch. So we've all got eight single crochets in a tight little circle. That is row one complete. Now things are going to get a little bit easier. So the larger you get, the further out in a circle you go, the easier the doily making becomes. We're going to chain five to begin. This chain five counts as a double crochet, chain two. So into each stitch all the way around, now this little stitch here, if you pull up, you can sort of see that stitch is already used, we're going to work into the next one over here. But basically you want to work eight of what we're about to do. This counts as the first one, double crochet, chain two. You're going to double crochet into the next stitch. I'm going to work over top of my short tail here, but you can leave it to the back and weave it in later if you want. Double crochet into the next stitch. 
and chain two. Double crochet, chain two into the next stitch, and double crochet, chain two into each stitch around. Now you want eight spokes, eight spokes, eight chain two spaces, however you want to look at it by the end of row one. So whichever eight stitch tops you work into, so remember when you're working in the round you have something called the false stitch. You might want to use that if you didn't want to use the stitch immediately next to it. If you used the stitch immediately next to it, you're not going to use the false stitch. The, the point here is to not get hung up on which stitches you need to use. You want to have eight evenly spaced rungs all the way around the center at the end of row two. So you just want to do this double crochet, chain two, seven times because your chain five that began the row counts as a double crochet, chain two. At the end of row two, when you've worked your eighth spoke, so that's seven double crochet, chain two, remembering that chain five counts as one, so that's your seventh technical double crochet, it's your eighth spoke. Don't forget to chain two. I'm going to get rid of this little short tail later. You're going to find the third chain of your chain five, so it's very small. Sometimes it helps to go sort of see there's the top chain, there's the second chain, here's the third chain. It's the middle chain you're looking for, the third one of the chain five, and you're going to join with a slip stitch in the top of it. There we go. And that is row two. So row two, we should all have eight little spokes or eight little chain two spaces all the way around. We are going to slip stitch into the next chain two space. Now if you wanted the center of your doily to be a different color, you could fasten off there, weave in your tails, and join your new color in any chain two space. So this is the original, so there's your center, here are your eight spokes. You can fasten off and then join a new color in any one of those chain two spaces, doesn't matter. But if you're not changing colors like me, you're just going to slip stitch into the next chain two space. We're going to chain four to begin. This chain four counts as a treble crochet. So I know treble crochets scare a few people, but when you're working small, they're actually a lot easier to do. You're going to work three more treble crochets into the same space. So treble crochet is wrapped twice around the hook before you pick up a loop and then yarn over, pull back through two, yarn over, pull back through two, yarn over, pull back through two. You do that three times and there's your treble. So we'll do two more of those into that space. There we go. So into that chain two space, oops, working small, it's a little different. Into that chain two space from the previous row, we'll have a chain four that counts as a treble crochet and three actual treble crochets. Chain one, and then into each chain two space around, so seven more times, you're gonna work four treble crochets and a chain one in between each set. So four treble crochet, chain one. Four treble crochet, chain one. Those treble crochets are all worked into those nice big chain two spaces. Take your time. Remember to chain one in between each set of four trebles. So there's my set of four, chain one. Here's the next space. Four more treble crochet into it, chain one. At the end of row three, you should have 32 treble crochets. That includes that chain four that began and eight chain one spaces. And speaking of chain ones, don't forget the last chain one after your last set of four treble crochets. To join this row, we are not using the top of the chain four. We are actually going to slip our hook into the space between the chain four and the treble crochet right next to it. Slip stitch to join. I'll explain why in a moment. If you feel it's difficult to identify those chain one spaces, then this is where the stitch markers or your safety pins might come in. You can just slip a stitch marker or safety pin 
into those chain one spaces, you'll have eight. And this will help you identify where they are as we work row four. So that's only if you have trouble seeing those chain one spaces. All right, we join with a slip stitch into the space between the chain four and the treble crochet. Row four begins with a chain four. The chain four counts as a treble crochet and into that same space between this chain four and the treble crochet from the previous row, we're going to treble crochet. So right into the space, not the top of a stitch. Look for the space in between the next two stitches. So we're looking for the space between those treble crochets. We're going to work two treble crochet stitches into that space between stitches from the previous row. And one more. There were four treble crochets in that set. That means there's three spaces between. So the space between the last two treble crochets, you're going to treble crochet twice into that space. So that is six treble crochets worked across what was an original set of four from the previous row. So once again, there's four trebles from the previous row. We're working two treble crochets into the space between stitches, and that works out to six treble crochets per petal, let's say. So four trebles equals three spaces in between. That's two trebles per space. That's six trebles. We chain one. And we skip the chain one space. This is why I say you might want to mark it. If you can't see it, because it is pretty small, you want to just skip the chain one space. You want to make sure you're not working into it. So chain one when you're done your six trebles here. Skip the chain one space from the previous row. Look for the space now between the next two treble crochets and repeat two treble crochet stitches in each space between treble crochet stitches from the previous row. You'll have six worked across what was a set of four. And then when you're done with that, you chain one, skip the chain one space below it, marked by a stitch marker if you did that, and repeat all the way around. of row four, you should have 48 treble crochets and eight chain one spaces. Speaking of which, don't forget the last chain one. And you are going to join to the top of the chain four this time. So you find the top of the chain four and you're going to join with a slip stitch to the top of it. So that's eight chain one spaces, 48 treble crochet all the way around. And we've all got a circle, something that looks a bit like this. And now we are going to create that petal effect. So that is this piece here. This is all made in one go. And this is how it looks on the bigger one. So we're going to take, this is that set of four trebles, this is the set of six trebles, and now we are going to combine the whole thing into a bit of a point. So a lot of doilies like to finish with pretty little points all the way around. This one has sort of a flower effect. That's why we called it our modern, our spring flower modern doily. And that is what we're going to do. Here we go. We are going to chain three. This chain three counts as a partial treble crochet because we are going to be using the treble crochet six together stitch all the way around. Now before you get panicked, remember you're using a smaller hook and thinner weight yarn. It is not as complicated as it sounds and it actually feels a little more in control <laughs> as you go. So try to make sure that you're holding your work as close to the base of your stitches or to the base of your hook as possible. This is what allows you to keep control. And here we go. 
We're going to start a treble crochet in the next stitch. So this chain three counts as part of the treble crochet six together. It sits up on top of the chain four. So we're going to pick up in the very next stitch and we're going to work the first two thirds of the treble crochet. So yarn over, pull back through two, yarn over, pull back through two. You'll be left with two loops on your hook. Now we start another treble. Yarn over twice. Find the next stitch. Here it is here. Pick up a loop and you work the first two thirds of that treble. Yarn over, pull back through two, yarn over, pull back through two. So we're three loops. Those through loops all each indicate or represent the partly worked treble crochet beneath it. So we're halfway there. Start another one. Into the next treble. Pick up a stitch, or a loop I should say. Work the first two thirds. Yarn over, back through two. Yarn over, back through two. There's four loops representing four partly worked treble crochets. Two more to go. The first two thirds of the stitch. That's five. And one more. Work the first two thirds of it. And now you've got six loops on your hook. Each of those loops represents a partly worked treble crochet. There should be six. Now you yarn over, and I find it helpful to hold your work right below your, your hook here. Pull that loop back through everything. That is a treble crochet six stitches together. It takes those six trebles that we made in the previous row and pinches them together at the top, creates a really nice looking petal effect. This is very typical, common motif used in a lot of doilies. And now we're going to make it kind of interesting. So we're going to chain three right from where we are. And we're going to put a little pico right at the top of our petal. So you chain three. You're going to have a little kind of bottom of a loop from that chain you just made that sits right across the top of those six treble crochets worked together. Slip stitch right into that loop. So you've made yourself a little tiny pico and We'll go around and pull out those picots at the end when we're finished. And now we want to get down to our chain one space. So here we go. We're going to chain six. Find that chain one space. We're going to slip stitch right into it. So if you still need to keep a marker in your chain one spaces, just so you know where they are, you can make sure they're all indicated with a stitch marker, but you should have eight of them. So chain six, slip stitch into the chain one space. And now we're going to start the next one. So we're going to chain six to begin. And now we are going to work a six treble crochet together across these six treble crochets. First, second, third, fourth, fifth, six. Here we go. Start a treble in that first treble crochet. You might find it helpful to roll the work around your hook so that you can see everything. Yarn over, pull back through two, nice and careful. Yarn over, pull back through two. And that will leave you with this loop on your hook. That one represents the chain six. And then this loop on top of that first partly worked treble crochet. Here we go. That's two. And remember this first loop is for your current work and each of the successive loops should be sitting right on top of a partly worked treble crochet. So when we're ready to yarn over and pull back through everything, we'll actually have seven loops on our hook. All right, let's quickly recap. Here's the working loop that attaches us to the rest of our work. It sits at the top of that chain six. 
you should have six more loops on your hook, each one of them sitting directly above a partly worked treble crochet. So seven loops in total, pretty busy little hook here. Hold your work as tightly as you can up against your hook, yarn over, pull back through everything. That connects our pretty little leaf edging or petal edging and it connects all six of those treble crochets work together. Need a pico, chain three. You find that little loop that sits right at the top or at the base of the chain three, but right across the top of those six treble crochets work together. Chain six. And then you look for the next chain one space and slip stitch right into it. And that's what you're going to do all the way around. Chain six to begin, treble crochet six together, chain three for the little pico and slip stitch at the top, and then chain six and slip stitch into the chain one space. And that is the complete petal top that we're making. It looks like this. So each petal has a chain six, a little chain three pico that sits on top of that treble crochet six together and then you chain six and slip stitch to join. So it looks super complicated but if you break it down into its individual little parts it's not difficult at all. It's really just a matter of making sure you hold your work as tightly as you can wherever you need to hold it. So if it's at the base you hold it there. If you have to hold it up against under the hook you hold it there and that way you keep control over it. That keeps control on your tension and working small and complicated looking stitches is not as difficult as it once may have looked. As you near the end of row five, you're going to finish your last little chain three slip stitch. That's the pico up at the top there. You're going to chain six. And you're going to slip stitch into that chain one space between petals. Now remember, we started with a chain three, so we have to finish this little motif by chaining six and ending up underneath this pico up here on the first petal. So don't forget this part. You chain six, you slip stitch in underneath that pico up here at the top and you are finished. Now the other added bonus about finishing a pico or finishing a motif like this, a little doily, up at the top, whereas maybe we're more used to finishing somewhere down here, is because typically with little tiny motifs like this, little doilies, you would be joining them together into a larger thing, like a tablecloth, maybe a table runner, Maybe you'd have four doilies put together. And because there are eight petals in this, you would join them sort of, these two would be joined to their neighbor up here, and then maybe these two would be joined to this neighbor over here. And that is how you would join them. And you could join as you go um, by just connecting up at the top of a little doily. We'll cover that again in a different tutorial. For now, that is the end of row five. That is the end of the little doily. You can snip your thread, fasten off as you would anything else with a crochet hook. Make sure that's a nice tight little knot. And thread is a little on the slippery side, so you want to make sure that when you weave it in, I like to kind of bring it down the back of some of my stitches here. So I'm just going to slip my hook or my needle in. I'm going to thread up my needle. There we go. I'm going to bring it down the back of a couple of these treble crochets, just bringing it through the little loops on the back of the treble crochets. I'm going to bring it right down to about here. And then I'm going to weave it in underneath those treble crochet stitches from the previous row. I'm being very careful trying not to split the actual thread of the stitch. So I'm just going to pull that out, make sure I don't pull too tightly. 
There we go. And then I'm going to double back. So I have to tighten up just a bit to get my needle in there. I'm jumping over top of the last loop. There we go. And then I'm very gingerly going back through those same loops. Now before I pull tight, tightly, I'm going to make sure that I haven't cinched any of those stitches. And I'm going to very carefully pull back. So I like to grab now the little tiny bit of the loop, pull it out, and then I give everything a nice little tug to make sure it's all still looking the way it should. Then I flip it over so that it's right side up. I'm going to go around and pull on all of those little picots just to make sure that they're pinched up at the top. They're sticking at the top of each petal the way they should. And at this point you could block it. A little bit of steam blocking. You could get it wet and just flatten it and let it dry. Um, if you're joining it to other motifs, I mean you're just going to put this aside and keep going. You can also just flatten it down and use the heat of your hand to flatten it out. Doesn't that look absolutely adorable? Looks like a little flower. As you saw in the tutorial, I sort of got creative with some of the different threads I was using. Um, if you watched our live stream a little while ago, or maybe it was my might have been actually a little vlog on that eclectic thread collection I have. I showcased this. This is that stuff I don't really know what to, to call it. It's multiple colors all spun together, but it's about as wide um, and as thick as a size 3 or a size 5 weight thread category. So I thought I'd give it a go. It's basically the same size. So it does. it is the same size as the 3 weight category of crochet thread. But because of those three colors together, it feels a little busy to me. So I'm not so sure that I would make a whole set of these to stand out on their own. I don't think that looks as attractive or as crisp as this one does necessarily. Another good reason to experiment. So that's what I would probably call a twist style yarn or a variegated yarn if this was a yarn, but it's in thread format. And you lose the prettiness of that amazing little motif. Motifs, like this one, are designed to be joined together. So if you were going to make a whole pile of them, you would want to join as you go. Let's say if you were making a tablecloth or a table runner or even clothing down the road. These are eight pointed motifs. So there are eight petals, there are eight little tiny points. And as you're working along, you would just be joining them right here at this tiny little pico twice. Once to its neighbor here, one to its neighbor here, and so on. Eight pointed motifs are a great motif to start with if you want to get into larger join-as-you-go projects. Join-as-you-go is a great technique to have if you are working on motif style doilies or tablecloths or table runners or clothing because you don't want to have to sew all of these together. You've got too small an area, you're going to end up with, with lengths of, of thread that you need to sort of weave in. It's much easier to do the join-as-you-go. In another tutorial down the road, we will show that. Um, but that's all I'm going to say. If any of you have done Join As You Go before, and we do have some tutorials on how to do that, it's a very basic process, and there's no real rule to it. So if you find that you slip stitch into the pico above it of the exact same motif, and then you work down here, work this petal, you're slip stitching to join this one. Any way you find it makes sense for you is how you do it. So there's no right or wrong way. It's what looks right. Uh, but that's why it's fun to experiment with the eight pointed motifs. On its own, however, like I said, I think that makes an absolutely gorgeous little coaster. Um, even something that you might want to hang in a window. There's a lot of very pretty decorative opportunities uh, for these little motifs. So if you want to experiment with your small hooks and all that crochet thread that you've just got balled up in, <laughs> in the closet because you don't know what else to do with it, Try some of these. Try familiar things like the little uh, uh, the granny square. We did that on a live stream a little while ago, and I think we even have a little miniature recap of that on the channel. A little thread crochet granny square makes a really cute patch for jeans or jean jackets. This would even make a pretty patch on a jean jacket. Anyway, the sky's the limit. 
don't be afraid like I was. <laughs> Get in now while you still can and you can still use your fingers because being able to make something this pretty feels so good and it really wasn't that difficult. Like I said, it looks more complicated than it is and it's only five rows. So put that in your head. It's only five rows. I can commit to five rows. Do the five rows. We hope you enjoyed this little introduction to doily making. More doily content coming in the future, we promise. <laughs> and we will see you soon here on the Jaden Stitches Show. Until then, stay safe, stay crafty, enjoy the lovely weather, and we will see you soon. Bye guys. Hi everyone. This is Mama and Stitches. Thank you for watching. Here are a few other videos you might enjoy. Don't forget to subscribe, and you can also click the like button and the bell. Thank you. Have a wonderful day.